So thank you so much once again for attending our virtual Lunch and Learn for our May, um, our May Lunch and Learn. Um, we thank you so much for taking out the time to um, come and um, take off from your lunch to do this with us. We appreciate it greatly. Um, so first I would like to introduce to some and for those that already know him, this is our director, Mr. Tom McCaslin. Unfortunately, he is un he will not be attending today. However, he I believe that he shares the same sentiments that we have, that we are very thankful that you decided to be with us on today. Today's objective for our Lunch and Learn is the three E's, educate, empower, and elevate. Our goal is to educate you about the programs that we have to offer. And through that education, we hope to empower you to make the best decision for you and your family. And in return, those decisions will elevate the communities in which you live. So now we will begin and I will tell you about the agenda for today's event. The first part of our agenda is the introduction of our outreach staff. After the outreach staff information, we will give you a mini commercial for the Fair Housing Hotline. Once we finish with the commercial, we will third we will introduce the spotlighted program for our department, which is the Home Buyers Choice program. Then we will have another mini commercial for the fair housing and hurricane season. And then we will end our event with upcoming events and final remarks. Now we will have the introduction of our outreach staff from Mr. Pedro Sosa. <clears throat> our outreach team consists of Onika Porter, Administrative Manager, Natasha Smith, Community Investment Coordinator, Pedro Sosa, Community Liaison, Becky Benitez, Community Liaison, and Deja Jones, Community Liaison. We are spotlighting the Home Buyer Choice Program. Presenting the program will be uh, Jeremiah Rivera, Program Policy and a manager, and we also have Nina Coletta, director of the program. Good morning, everyone. Give me just one moment to pull up the PowerPoint presentation. We'll get right started. Uh, as I'm doing that, I want to echo uh, Latasha's sentiments. Uh, thank you for joining us during your lunchtime today. We appreciate the opportunity to uh, spotlight the Home Buyer Choice Program. Uh, so again, my name is Jeremiah Rivera. Uh, I am with the City of Houston's Housing and Community Development Department. And yes, I have the, quite the mouthful for title Program Policy and Partnership Manager. Um, I will be conducting this webinar with you uh, also in partnership with Nina from the HCLT. We'll be giving you information about our newest down payment assistance program at the city, the Home Buyer Choice Program. Before we start, just a couple of things to keep in mind. Uh, as we go through this presentation, please keep in mind that the program guidelines hosted on our websites are the definitive sources for all of our programs. Since the process of moving towards home ownership can take months, I strongly encourage you to visit our websites and guidelines for the most up-to-date information and application processes. You'll have an opportunity to request a copy of this presentation we're going through today, where we'll have direct links to our websites and phone numbers, so that way uh, you don't have to fill the need to write down hastily a long website link or phone numbers. The primary audience for our City of Houston down payment assistance programs are individuals who have taken the first step into home ownership. Specifically, folks who have secured a fixed rate mortgage or have taken a certified home buyer education course. This is the case for all of our down payment assistance programs for the, in the City of Houston and the Home Buyers Choice Program. That said, if you have not done either yet, Please stick around. This, this information will still be helpful to you if you're considering home ownership, or if you know someone in your social circle that's working towards home ownership. 
As kind of a quick FAQ question, uh, as before we get started, we're often asked about credit scores uh, being potentially criteria in our programs. I want to be explicit about this up front. We don't ask for credit score in any of our down payment assistance programs with the city of Houston. When you're ready to apply, you should have already gotten a pre-approval letter for a fixed rate mortgage. Your credit score may impact your ability to secure a fixed rate mortgage or other financial products, but it is not something that we will ask for during uh, the application process for our down, assistance and pay down payment assistance programs. And one last thing, as Latasha mentioned, we encourage you to uh, ask your questions in the chat box, which Nina will address during the first half of the presentation, and then we'll get together at the end as a large group and answer the last questions uh, in dedicated Q&A time. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, uh, I'm Jeremiah and Nina, will, and Nina, my uh, partner at the Houston Community Land Trust, to be your presenters today. And by the end of uh, our time together, you are, uh, you'll have learned about the Home Buyer Choice Program, or HTP for short, have a basic understanding of the Home Buyer Choice Program's benefits and eligibility, and know where to go to uh, for more information on the program or how to apply. Uh, but before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge that everyone's journey towards home ownership is unique. Everyone has their own values they attach to that concept of home ownership, and they've all, we've all taken different paths along the way to get there. So I'd like to hear from you uh, virtually in the chat box. I have a couple of questions. Uh, this is completely optional, but uh, just let us know in the chat. What excites you about the potential of uh, being home ownership? And second, how long have you been actively thinking about home ownership? I'm going to give just a couple seconds for folks to respond, but this gives us kind of a high level understanding of how long, uh, of what uh, unique drivers that everyone has as they're moving towards this journey. So let's talk about the Home Buyer's Choice Program, uh, which is our newest program in partnership again with the Houston Community Land Trust. When I say newest, we actually launched in late 2020. This is uh, one of our first homeowners to close through the Home Buyer's Choice Program. He works at a nonprofit that focuses, focuses on bettering the lives of fellow Houstonians through housing and education programming. These are pictures of the day that he closed on his new home. Through the HTP program, he received a subsidy that covered about two thirds of the price of his new home, and he pays around $700 a month in monthly fees, including his mortgage. So the Home Buyer Choice Program provides financial assistance that can help cover the necessary cost of home ownership, such as the mortgage, the contract price of the home, including land and improvements to the land, and closing costs. The Home Buyer Choice Program has two subsidy tiers for eligible homes based on the property. Uh, I think someone uh, had a question where they may have accidentally uh, muted themselves, but I'm going to go ahead and keep moving forward. Uh, just to restate that though, the Home Buyer's Choice Program does have two subsidy tiers for eligible homes based on the properties addressed. We'll explain pro uh, property eligibility a little bit later on. But in tier one, uh, the home is located in an A or B rated school zone, and the applicant would be eligible to receive up to $150,000 in down payment assistance towards that home. On the right side of the slide, I put a link to a map where you can uh, enter the address of a property that will uh, let you know if it's an A or B rated school zone. Please note that when you use this map, it is a guide, it is a tool, but it's not the definitive resource into whether or not a property is zoned to an A or B rated school. The TEA rates schools, and then we use their official rankings to make the tier subsidy determination but this map is a very good uh, guideline for giving you an idea of whether or not the home you're, the applicant is looking at is in a tier one or tier two uh, uh, rated uh, school zone. So in the tier two uh, in the Home Buyer Choice Program, the home is still located within the city of Houston, but it is not in an A or B rated school zone. In this case, the subsidy would be for $100,000 towards the eligible property. And on the right side here, you'll see a link to that same uh, uh, that same map that I mentioned in the previous slide. 
Now let's talk a little bit about eligibility. Uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, we'll just kind of go through this uh, checklist. Number one, you must be a US citizen or permanent resident. Number two, you must be able to put down at least $350 out of pocket. Number three, maintain at least $1,000 in savings for use after closing. Number four, obtain at least $70,000 in financing or personal savings towards the home's purchase. This is typically in the form of, a, of that uh, mortgage that we spoke about earlier. Number five, be willing to attend an eight hour HUD certified home buyer education course. If you have attended a course within the past year, just keep in mind that certificate is good for one year. Number six, you must be willing to attend an HCLT led orientation session, which will go into more details about uh, the, the unique aspects of, um, of uh, this particular program, which we'll actually go into in a little more detail uh, when Nina takes over. Number seven, have a household income at or below 80% area median income or AMI for short. And we'll have a slide. The next slide will actually detail what that looks like. And number eight, you cannot be a homeowner at the time of this purchase. So this slide shows you what 80% AMI looks like. Uh, this is a slightly dated slide. Uh, HUD just recently updated uh, for 2021, uh, but the numbers uh, here that you're seeing, the dollar figures that you're seeing here are very uh, similar to what uh, HUD uh, updated to for 2021. So we'll, for now, we'll just go through this uh, particular slide at, for some examples. So a single individual can make up to $44,150 and be eligible for this program, while a family of four, uh, a household of four, I should say, uh, could make up to $63,050. So again, uh, HUD just recently updated these figures, but uh, they are not much different than what you're looking at here. But we can go into uh, into that in a little more detail and send a link in, uh, after the fact so you can have that uh, on hand. Now, I'm about to hand it over to Nina for the second half of this presentation. But before I do that, I do have another question that I'd like everyone to uh, uh, address in the chat box. And this one's a lot simpler than the first one. Um, so just on a scale of one to five, how familiar are you with the community land trust home ownership model? One is I have no idea what that is. And five is I'm very familiar about community land trust home ownership. So again, that question is on a scale of one to five, how familiar are you with Community land trust home ownership models, with one being uh, not very familiar and five being very familiar. So, with that said, I'm going to hand it over to Nina. Thank you so much, Jeremiah. And just before I jump in, I want to make sure um, that the HCDD folks have a chance to explain whether the slide will be available after the presentation, um, and if so, how to get to those, because we've gotten some questions in the chat. All right. Um, the the slides will be available um, through a post email. So everyone that registered, you provided your email. We will provide those slides to you at that time. Thank you. You're welcome. So thanks, Jeremiah, for introducing the program, eligibility requirements, and sort of what we look like. Um, again, my name is Nina Collada. I am the Director of Programs at the Houston Community Land Trust. And the Houston Community Land Trust is the nonprofit that's partnering with the City of Houston to bring the Home Buyer Choice Program to Houston residents. Um, I am going to, I'm going to get a big, big picture with you all for a minute here because I see in the chat that there are lots of folks out there who aren't familiar with community land trusts. So that's very, I'm very excited to introduce that to you. And then I'm going to go a bit deeper into CLT home ownership, what that looks like, the most important features a buyer would want to know about before coming into the program. So um, as Jeremiah mentioned, this is a partnership with the Houston Community Land Trust and what makes the Home Buyer Choice Program different from a lot of home ownership assistance programs is that for uh, each home that's purchased at an affordable price through the Home Buyer Choice Program using that grant funding that Jeremiah just discussed, 
the Houston Community Land Trust will bring the land beneath the home purchased into trust, committing to protect the land in perpetuity as a community asset. So what all community land trusts around the country, including ours, aim to do is bring high quality residential property into trust or into the commons, as I like to say, we take that housing off the, you could call it the speculative real estate market, and we put control of it into the hands of the people who live in that housing. This way we can protect it from what we've all seen, um, market pressures that are going to continue pushing home prices out of reach for many first time and modest income households and, and would be home buyers. Um, we've seen this happening here in Houston, especially in the last year, as median you know, home sale prices have soared and they're outpacing incomes. They're making it harder for regular folks to just find a good quality home to buy in your price range in many of our Houston neighborhoods. So that's where the Community Land Trust comes into this. We, we come into the purchase with you. We help you along with the city of Houston's grant funding to buy at an affordable price today, but we also ensure that the home that you buy will stay affordable and will stay dedicated to single family home ownership for years to come. So how do we achieve this? As I mentioned, um, for every home purchased with Home Buyer Choice Program funding, the land trust that the nonprofit will uh, share ownership of the land with the homeowner and the homeowner will have ownership of the home themselves. So this is a home ownership program. You would not be renting, you would not be a tenant, but you would be uh, sharing ownership of the land, as I said, with the community land trust. So the community land trust will hold the land in trust and the home buyer and the homeowner will enter into a very, very long term ground lease with the nonprofit. And through that ground lease, the homeowner agrees that they will use that home as their primary residence, not an investment property. And if they decide to sell, which you do not have to do, um, they agree that they'll sell and pay that forward, pay that affordability forward to another income qualified family at a predetermined affordable price. And I will go into that price in the next couple of slides. So as I said, just quick overview, um, the home buyer agrees to use that home as a primary residence, you know, maintain that home. They take responsibility as a homeowner typically does for repairs and maintenance. Um, and they agree that when they're ready to resell, to move on to the next stage, if that's in the cards, they will sell only to that income qualified family at an affordable price by working in collaboration with the community land trust, which owns the land. So next slide, please. So uh, we did, I did just go over this, um, but uh, I wanna highlight that we'll go over the ground lease. Um, which is again, the, the tool that the nonprofit, the CLT uses um, to kind of come into these agreements with the person who has bought the land um, that the, you know, bought the home um, beneath the land owned by the community land trust. So it's a 99 year lease. It's a very, very long-term commitment on both sides to uh, do the things that I've just described, to make sure that this home is maintained as a family, you know, primary residence for that household, um, and that when the homeowner or their inheritors is ready to move on to the next stage, that that home will be passed on as an affordable residence to the next buyer. Next slide, please. Um, I've touched on a few of these items already, but I want to highlight um, I've been talking about sale and, and, and that's what I'll kind of talk about a little bit here. You might be asking yourself uh, if I'm a community land trust homeowner and I am ground leasing the land from the community land trust, what rights do I have um, in terms of can I leave this property to my heirs in a will, for example? Um, what happens when I want to sell the property um, and so forth? So. I would I want to mention that there's a, a sort of a balance involved in the community land trust and what we try to achieve with 
uh, community land trust homeownership is um, that we are protecting the rights of the homeowner to pass the home on to their, their immediate household members and their direct heirs without any sort of uh, restrictions on that inheritance. But when it comes to folks outside of that direct heir lineage or outside of the household, the community land trust wants to ensure that the inheritors of the property who might want to live there as their primary residence are also in, you know, in income qualified households who need that affordability. Um, and I'm very happy to answer, as I'm sure you might have questions about how does that inheritance process work in more detail um, in the Q&A. Um, so you can, you can leave the home to your inheritors, um, but there are some limitations on who can live in the home after that. Um, I want to talk about the sale process for a community land trust home. So you may um, be wondering about, is this a program where I am going to be earning equity as a homeowner and sort of what will I get out of this property when I'm ready to sell? Um, it's a very important question and it's very central to home ownership for a lot of folks. So I wanna talk about it here. Can we go to the next slide, please? So as I mentioned, if you're a community land trust homeowner, you've, you've been able to purchase your home at a super, super affordable price to you. And we wanna make sure that the next buyer also is able to take advantage of that uh, affordability in the future so that the home never kind of gets too expensive and out of reach of modest income buyers. So when you, uh, when you just are ready to sell your community land trust home, you've agreed ahead of time with the CLT that you won't sell for any more than what we call the resale formula price, um, which is literally a price that an, is written into the ground lease. So you'll know kind of from day one what that looks like. And uh, that price is the amount that you brought to your purchase plus 1.25% simple interest of appreciation on that price that you accrue each year as an owner. So the point here is that you will accrue and earn appreciation on your home as a community land trust homeowner, but you will not be, the home won't be appreciating at a market rate. It will be appreciating at this rate that you see on the screen here. Next slide, please. So here's an example of what that looks like. Um, as I said, we're gonna get into some detail about this. So say um, as a home buyer through the Home Buyer Choice Program, you've been able to take advantage of the $150,000 grant and you've been able to bring 75,000 approximately to your home purchase through your mortgage and your down payment. So that $75,000 contribution becomes your base price in the home, becomes your sort of starting out value in the home. And you can see in the chart on the right that when you're ready to resell the home, the resale price will be based on that 75,000 contribution, but it will appreciate by 1.25% every year. So in year five, I can resell the house and take home 79,800. In year 15, it's 89,200. Um, you know, and this is this is how the next buyer is able to afford the property while you can see that you are earning that, um, that appreciation through home ownership, which is an important aspect of wealth building and, and so forth. So um, that's the, the snapshot. Can we go to the next slide? I'll talk a little bit more about that um, contribution that I just spoke about and Jeremiah did mention. The home buyer uh, through the home buyer choice program is asked to bring at least $70,000 in a combination of financing and your down payment. So that means your mortgage that you borrow and your cash reserves and savings that you may have and want to bring to your purchase. So at the end of the day, our goal is for your contribution to result in a truly affordable housing payment each month. So what we look for are what we call debt to income ratios, which is just a uh, real estate industry term for how affordable is my payment in relation to my monthly income. 
Um, and this, the Community Land Trust will work with you very closely to determine what that number is for you. So you may be able to bring more than $70,000 if it's a very comfortable housing payment at the end of the day and you're borrowing $80,000 or $90,000, and that's okay. Um, but just to highlight where we are looking very closely at affordability, that's really the point. Um, so we, we work with you on that. Um, again, you all, you, the home buyer will be asked to bring at least $350 in their own savings and to keep some savings in reserve after closing as well. Um, and the last bullet is just to note that when we're looking at housing estimates and everything, we're looking very closely um, at each individual person and each person through our program gets a lot of attention around what's affordable for them um, uh, when it comes to putting a contract on a home. Next slide, please. So this slide, uh, it, the, it's kind of small, but it goes over what kinds of homes one can buy with Home Buyer Choice Program grant money. Um, this I want to highlight, the Home Buyer Choice Program is available throughout the city of Houston. Um, that's a question I get asked a lot. You, through the program, a home buyer is actually going out with their realtor, just like a buyer in any other context, and looking at different properties in their affordable price range that they can apply that grant funding to. And then uh, we basically bring the property into the community land trust at their purchase. So we're not selling particular homes. You won't find listings on our website, but um, you, we can work with you to sort of see if any of our partners, um, like the nonprofit developers out there, are building in a neighborhood that you're particularly interested in. Um, the homes have to just simply be single family homes that includes a freestanding townhome, so not a condominium or multifamily property or manufactured homes at this time. Um, they have to be located within the city of Houston limits, so they have to pay property taxes to the city of Houston and Harris County. Um, and then where the home is located with respect to those A and B rated schools will determine how much grant funding it's eligible for, as Jeremiah explained earlier. Um, we are looking for homes that are in tip top condition through this program. So this is not a program for those of y'all who may be looking for a fixer upper. This is, this is probably not the route you want to go. What we're really emphasizing is um, newer homes or homes that have been recently renovated or are just in really good condition. And we are not able to provide funding for homes that are situated in a floodplain or a 100 year flood zone. Um, with the 500 year, looking at those FEMA maps um, as they come out, that's okay, but the home must be in compliance with current flood ordinances and the homeowner would have to buy flood insurance. Sure, and I want to note that there's a, this is a lot of information on this slide and you'll get information, you'll get a copy of this slide if requested. And then you will also have our website at the end of the presentation where you can find all of this information and more um, for, for your own research um, and your own at your own pace. Next slide, please. So um, this slide is just about, uh, you know, how the Home Buyer Choice Program protects the public investment in these incredible $100,000 to $150,000 grants that we're able to provide. Um, I just want to sort of note and go over the Community Land Trust is dedicated to being a uh, responsible steward of all of the land that we share with our homeowners through the Home Buyer Choice Program. Um, and the, the ground lease um, and other sort of controlling documents are in the public record and it's very public and open um, and enforceable. And the city of Houston as our funder is, you know, obviously looking very closely at uh, how we protect um, and responsibly use funding under the program. Um, and we also are dedicated uh, at the Community Land Trust to ensuring that our home buyers are successful in home ownership and that we are there as a support to our homeowners after they purchase their home. When it comes to things like mortgage um, delinquency and distress, 
the community land trust model can really offer a lot um, in foreclosure prevention, especially. Um, and of course, the community land trust is, is committed, and I'm happy to answer any questions that come up after the presentation, to holding that land that we share with our homeowners in perpetuity. It's not going anywhere. <laughs> and uh, be more than happy to, to talk through that as well. Next slide, please. So before I wrap this part of the presentation up, I just want to kind of highlight again, if you were perhaps a hopeful home buyer and you're looking and considering um, the home buyer choice program, the community land trust home ownership model versus other opportunities you may have out there to buy a home in the conventional way, what are the benefits of the community land trust model that you should be aware of? Um, of course, the basis of our ability to protect long-term affordability is that the homeowner agrees to transfer that land beneath their home to the trust so that we can hold it for affordability. But we still want to emphasize that though the home will appreciate at that very steady rate of 1.25% per year, which may be slower than market appreciation in Houston, the homeowner is still able to build equity through their home ownership under this model. The uh, Home Buyer Choice Program through the City of Houston's very generous grants um, we are able to offer uh, home buyers the opportunity to get into a mortgage that is truly affordable to them. And we also are able to offer to our homeowners uh, community land trust property tax treatment, which enables the homeowner to have their home appraised at the affordable price rather than the market price. And so those property taxes remain lower and more predictable over time, which can be a concern for homeowners, especially in some of the neighborhoods here in Houston where values are appreciating quite quickly and pr um, property taxes are doing the same. Um, if you're currently a renter, you may consider the benefits of having a stable mortgage payment um, and CLT payment over time that doesn't change. You know, we're not a landlord, obviously. Um, we just hold the land. So, uh, you know, you'll have your regular mortgage payment and the CLT's lease fee, and it will stay the same over time. Um, you'll be on a fixed rate mortgage. You know, you won't be subject to the landlord raising costs. And I know that can be definitely a concern for a lot of folks. I mentioned it a little bit in the last slide, but as a community land trust homeowner, you would also benefit from having our organization there to support you and to, to sort of help steward your success as a homeowner. Oftentimes our folks, these are our first time home buyers, and you might have a lot of questions about what that entails and what repairs and maintenance um, entail on a home and, and things like that. The community land trust is here to support our homeowners and we have staff dedicated to doing just that. Um, and uh, lastly, I want to note that um, the Community Land Trust is a nonprofit organization that is looking forward in the future to bringing our homeowners onto our governing board of directors to, to make sure that the, the organization is really guided by our homeowners and the folks who own the homes on top of the community land trust land. So there are a lot of community leadership opportunities involved with that. Um, and we're not, you know, we would, would want to offer any homeowners who are really interested in the sort of leadership of the organization to come talk to us about that when you apply as well. Um, next slide, please. So here's quickly how to participate if you're interested in this program. Um, I We've put our URL, the, that's the Houston Community Land Trust website. Um, if you'd like to learn more about community land trust home ownership, if you'd like to learn more about the Home Buyer Choice Program, again, eligibility, what kind of homes, you know, how to work with a realtor, et cetera, that's all online. Our application is also online. Filling out the online application is the best way to be contacted by us um, and to, for, to have an opportunity to talk to one of our intake team about your current situation, your goals, and um, how to get uh, into a home with the program. And 
there's of course the qualification process following that where you'd work closely with the community land trust staff and we collaborate with our partners at HCDD, the city of Houston during that step. Um, and finally, uh, the buying process, um, you would be working with a realtor, um, realtors out there. We absolutely uh, rely heavily on the leadership and sort of uh, knowledge and expertise of realtor partners. So please go to our website and check out our realtor handbook, which has all kinds of information specific to the realtor community working with this program. Um, and um, if you go to the next slide, I believe, yeah, I believe that that's our contact information um, if you'd like to learn more and if you have general questions. Thank you. I think that's it for me. Yeah, uh, we're ready to take questions. And I think, Latasha, you're monitoring the chat. Uh, were there some common themes that uh, we need to address in the or that we should address in the next few minutes that we have together? Yes, um, the major question is about property taxes. Why do we have to still pay property taxes? And what what um, what benefit is it to um, to do this when you still have to pay property tax? Great question. Thank you. Property taxes are a huge element of the you know community land trust home ownership that make it different from conventional home ownership. So to answer the first question, why do I have to pay property taxes if I don't have like full ownership of the land? Um, the answer to that is the homeowner under this program, they do own the home itself. They have a deed um, in their name to what we call the improvements or the home that sits on the land. So you, you are the owner of that piece of property and you are responsible for property taxes on that property. When it comes to property taxes on the land that you're ground leasing from the community land trust, that land is taxed at the ground lease rate, not the market rate of the land, not the market price of the land. And the homeowner pays those taxes because the homeowner under the ground lease has the exclusive right to use and occupy and be on that land. Um, the community land trust doesn't um, use it, doesn't maintain it. We just hold it in trust with our affordability in mind. So the, the, the primary user of the property is the homeowner. And I'll speak briefly to why community land trust property taxes are more affordable than property taxes on other homes. And that's simply because the homes are appraised for property tax purposes at their affordable resale price. And as I said before, the leasehold um, value of the land. So both of those things are uh, sort of a reduced value in the eyes of the tax assessor, which benefits the homeowner in the sense that they're paying taxes on that affordable value, not on the market value, which is informed by a lot of different factors, including who's building what in your neighborhood and how prices are appreciating in your neighborhood that that may be outside of your control. Does that help with that question about property taxes? That's awesome, um, um, Nina. Um, another question, if I have land already, can I still participate in this program? Uh, I think this program is really for folks who are looking to buy uh, an existing home. Uh, so I don't believe the funding can be used to build a home on land that you already own. Jeremiah, do you have anything to add to that? No, that was spot on, Nina. Uh, and I guess there is a difference between, well, no, no, you're right. That's it. I don't want to complicate things. That's, that answered the question exactly. Mm -hmm. Latasha, I'm uh, mute again. I am so sorry. Um, the next question is, do you have a mortgage lenders list that you all are working with for this program? Yes, thank you so much for asking that question. The Community Land Trust has a 
a page on our website called resources for buyers and on that page you can find our participating lenders those are the lenders that home buyers will need to approach for a pre-approval if they're interested in the program the reason is that not because they're preferred lenders or, or anything like that um, for, from our perspective but it's because they are the lenders here in houston who can offer a community land trust loan so very important very important thank you for highlighting that all right um we have one question and she put it in here several times so i'm really going to ask this question for her if um the income cut off for two people um a two-person household is um 55 50.5 um if she goes over her income goes over to 61,000 are you all flexible with it we are not flexible um, on that those are hard cutoff numbers however if you make more than the numbers that you see on this slide and you still want um, to take advantage of home buyer assistance programs the city of houston and jeremiah can speak more to this does offer down payment assistance for folks earning up to 120 percent ami so that may be an option yeah, so that's very specifically uh, the program that Nina's mentioning is the Harvey uh, Home Buyer Assistance Program. Uh, most of our down payment assistance programs has an 80 percent area median income. Harvey, if you are a resident of uh, the city of Houston, when Hurricane Harvey hit, uh, you would be you would potentially be eligible for that program. And it does go to 120 percent AMI, which I don't remember exactly what that is off the top of my head, but uh, I'm pretty sure that for that specific number that would qualify. Uh, if you give me a moment, I'll put a link to that program in the chat box so you can uh, and uh, take a look at that and see if that would meet, meet your needs. All right. Um, I'm going to give you this last question. Um, and what we're going to do, I know a lot of people have different questions. The questions are still coming in. What we're going to do, we're going to take this last question. I'm going to write down all these questions and give to the presenters. And when you get your post email, um, hopefully by that time, all those questions will be answered and we will provide those answers to you. OK, um, the last question is, I just signed a lease. I don't know if it's an apartment. She didn't say if it was an apartment or um, something else, but she just signed a new lease. Should she wait to the very end of that lease to start the home buyer's process? So um, I would recommend applying probably somewhere between six months and at the uh, latest three months prior to your lease expiring to give that cushion in case your qualification process for some reason takes longer than you might think it would. Um, and so definitely, thanks for, yeah, think ahead is, is recommended for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if, I, if I could just add on real, just real quick and general advice, uh, take advantage of your realtor. For, mm -hmm. Uh, every like I meant the reason why I framed a lot at the beginning that everyone's journey is unique. Um, when it gets to really personal questions and unique circumstances, it's really hard for us to speak to that. So uh, take advantage of your realtor. They're uh, you're paying them for a reason, right? They have access to all sorts of information um, on on the housing market, and they know your personal situation. We'll, we're happy to do our best, but your realtor is really someone that should be on this journey of home ownership should be your partner because you are paying them. Uh, so just want to put that out there for everyone, not just for this program, but for home ownership in general. OK, um, Jeremiah, just quickly, if you could quickly answer this question or tell more about it, um, just through the chat, we I see that some people have questions about this particular program. Could you just elaborate a little on the um, program that Nina mentioned, the home buyers program with the um, and how much they can get from that and maybe one or two qualifications about that particular program. I think you're 
So you're referencing the Harvey Home Buyer Assistance Program? Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, with that particular program, uh, if we're looking at this slide, there's some pretty big differences. Uh, you can be earn up to 120% area median income and still be eligible. In terms of the actual down payment assistance, it's uh, $30,000 flat if, you're, if that applicant is eligible. Um, the other big thing, like I mentioned, is that you have to have been a resident of the city of Houston during the day, the literal day that Hurricane Harvey hit, um, and that this program is run through the city. So Nina already touched on it with eight, the Home Buyer's Choice program. You'll be interfacing with the Houston Community Land Trust. With Harvey, uh, the Harvey program, you'll be interfacing with the city of Houston. And so I put that link out there in, in uh, a little bit ago into the chat box. And that we have we have a whole entire webinars dedicated to that programming. So if there's interest, uh, go down to our HCDD homepage, scroll all the way down, very last part of the page. I promise, at the very end, and you'll see a, a calendar of events. And we have two webinars per month on this program: uh, second Saturday of the month and fourth Thursday of the month. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nina and Jeremiah. Um, for all that information, very good information. I know um, just by the questions um, being asked, um, a lot of people are excited about this and looking forward to learning more about it. So we thank you so much for taking our time to do that for us. Um, I'm going to share. Uh, for last minute, real quick, because uh, I just because I've seen this like six times. Sorry, Latasha, and I will. Be, I promise I'll be quiet after this. Oh, no problem. People have asked about Houston city limits. The mm -hmm. property that you're looking at, uh, and I brought this slide up, it has to pay property taxes to city of Houston and Harris County. And that's again, that's another thing a realtor can help you out with that can pull that information really quick. So when people are shopping, if you find that home, that real, your realtor can tell you, all off the top, not off the top of their head, but very quickly if that home pays taxes to the city and Harris County. Thank you once again for all that information. Let's see. Current slide. There we go. Okay. So now um, we are at our mini commercial for fair housing and hurricane season re resilient outreach grant. Um, today we have with us. Um, Kimmy Johnson, a senior planner for an administrative coordinator for PGM for our department. I just want to say this. A lot of people do not know. I know so much is going on in the world today, um, but this hurricane season, it comes faithfully every year. Um, and everyone talks about June 1st, June 1st. Um, she will provide some information for um, an outreach opportunity that um, maybe if you may not want to participate in it, but um, you know someone that is utilizing, um, that is teaching or have a class or just doing outreach to um, the elderly, to um, the schools, maybe they can benefit from this. So I would like for you to um, listen up and just get some information from Ms. Um, Kimmy Johnson, and I'm going to give it over to her. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Latasha, and thank you for hanging in with us um, during your lunch break. We do appreciate it. If you would give me just a second to pull up these slides, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so good afternoon again. I am Kimmy Johnson, <clears throat> and I'm a fair housing coordinator here at the Housing and Community Development Department. And today, I just really want to take a few minutes to tell you all about a new funding opportunity that's now available, and that's called the 2021 Fair Housing and Hurricane Season Resilience Outreach Program. 
Um, and next Thursday on May 27th at 10 a.m., we're going to have our virtual grant introduction workshop. And um, during that time, we're going to discuss the grant in full detail. Today, you're going to get a very mini version. Um, so please join us for that um, for that next week if you can. OK, so we uh, we launched a this as a pilot program um, last year. So we are very excited to be able to do this again. Um, and we want to partner with more organizations to better prepare our communities for hurricane season. As Latasha mentioned, it is uh, the bad weather has already started and um, we're just, you know, we just want to make sure everyone is prepared. So the reason that this outreach is so important is because our vulnerable communities, and this is due to historic housing discrimination, so they are also often uh, located in flood prone and environmentally hazardous areas. And as you know, um, they often have the fewest resources to prepare for and to recover from extreme weather events. So when those disasters are kind of thrown into the mix, they are they intensify those barriers and that access to quality schools, jobs, and healthcare resources. So that's a bit about why we are, why we want to do that. Why we want to do this program. So I want to mention that this grant is done on a reimbursable reimbursement basis. And we want the grant recipients to use up to $10,000 uh, to address fair housing and hurricane issues, um, to continue developing the, their relationships with community organizations and nonprofits uh, by building new relationships uh, or enriching existing relationships, and to simply increase our engagement about the intersection of fair housing and resilience. So here's a list of our target communities that we want organizations to reach through the outreach, and they include persons with disabilities, some communities, communities of color, persons with limited English proficiency, our seniors, our immigrant communities, vulnerable persons that were previously impacted or displaced by natural disasters, and finally, low and moderate income house households. We're looking for organizations that have the capacity to actually execute these outreach and education programs and that are also able to work at a neighborhood level just to ensure that these residents are better prepared for hurricane season and flooding disasters. Now to the most important part, how do you apply? Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the application period for this grant is now open. So the application is online, it's out there, we are getting the word out, um, but all applicants have to complete an online application and attend at least one of three virtual fair housing workshop sessions in order to qualify. The deadline to submit that application is June 16th. And so uh, the web page uh, with more information is on the screen and we'll also put it in the chat. So these are just a few key dates to keep in mind as you apply and kind of think through some of those um, outreach activities that you maybe want to do and put into your application. So next Thursday um, is the virtual grant introduction workshop. Um, and that is, again, is when we're going to uh, tell you all the details about the grant, again, how to apply and also give you some ideas to help you think through some of those activities for outreach. And also, um, if you're unable to attend that uh, that grant introduction workshop, it will be recorded and we're going to upload it to that website um, following the event. So if you missed it, it's OK. Um, but yeah, we look forward to having you there. And as I also mentioned, there are at least three fair housing uh, workshops um, that we wanna offer this time around during this grant. And those are really to give um, applicants an idea or just kind of, I'm sorry, the, the framework for fair housing and why it's this outreach is so important. And we also wanna like hone in on some, on some key things um, pertaining to the outreach. So. Like I said, please join us and please visit that website for more information. So we uh, in the Fair Housing Department, we have a variety of outreach materials that you can use and share with your community. So on the website, we have some downloadable fair housing information, um, and these are in six different languages. 
We also have a landlord, tenant, and fair housing hotline that is free to any caller. Um, my colleague, Miss Yolanda Jeffrey, she answers um, the calls and she, she returns them. Um, so uh, the hotline is just really a great resource, and we want people to know that they can call anytime they have any tenant and landlord questions or fair housing questions and issues. And finally, I, um, I'm able to make presentations um, to any type of audience about fair housing, and some of those topics include residents' rights under the Fair Housing Act, uh, we have a tenant and landlord issues, some fair housing complaints, like what that process looks like. And also we can help uh, map fair housing data within Houston. So we have a variety of opportunities and resources for um, housing related issues. Kimmy, can you repeat that you um, cut out a little bit? Oh, I'm sorry, can you hear me okay, Ashley? I can hear you now. Okay, yes, I was going to say that these resources um, are that you see on the screen. I just want to reinforce that we have several resources available and we are available um, to help uh, people learn about their uh, fair housing rights under the Fair Housing Act and also um, to assist with any, any issues that they may have or any questions. So you guys may remember a few years ago, we launched the Say Yes campaign, and it was basically to raise awareness about the types of people and professions that may need affordable homes in Houston. And so we, um, excuse me, we are looking to expand this campaign um, to include real Houstonians, kind of where they live, and we want to talk about how affordability and housing actually impacts them. And so we are asking for your help. Um, we want to find families who represent the diversity of our community and the diversity of housing types to share their stories and to participate in our campaign. Kimmy, you went out. Um... I do apologize. I guess there are some connectivity issues. Can you hear me okay, Latasha? Yes, I think okay. you were on the last slide. Yes, I'm sorry. So we're, I was, I'm talking about the affordable homes campaign um, that we're looking for volunteers um, to find families to we want to find families who represent the diversity in our community and as well as the diversity of housing types. And so we want to share their stories through photos and um, use their stories also. So um, if you um, in your family or you know some families who are interested in participating, um, the link is probably in the chat now and it was also online. I can, I feel, I can drop that in again. Uh, but if you could please either go to that website to sign up or pass that information along, we would really appreciate it. So thank you. And at this time, I'll pass it back over to Latasha. All right, um, Kimmy, if you could please do me a favor. Um, some individuals didn't um, see where you put, um, where's the application online. Um, could you share that with them or put it in the chat? So if you have a link. All right. Okay, she's gonna do that. She's having a few technical Thank difficulties. You. Yes, thank you. And I was going to say, Ashley has dropped that in the chat and I can I can put it in there as well. I'll also send those links to you at when you send the information out to all of the attendees today. All right. Well, thank you so much. And we thank you for all that information um, that you have provided for us. Um, now for upcoming events. Um, I would like to share two major upcoming events that um, we have one for this month and one for next month. Um, our new series that we have 360 Road to Home Ownership, um, that kind of like coincides with what we're, we were talking about today um, to prepare for home ownership and it's a lot entail. So, so First, making the decision, and then you have to put it into action. And this this particular um, workshop, Credit 101 Quick, quick Stop, um, will happen on May 
26th. It will be a virtual event. Um, if you would like to get more information about that, please put it in the chat and we will um, definitely give you more information about that. That is 360 Road to Home Ownership Series. Our first workshop will be Credit 101 Quick Stop. And that's May 21st. Put it on your calendar. Um, our June Lunch and Learn will deal with hurricane preparedness. I know you probably heard this already, but it is very important for you to be prepared for this. We really don't know what to expect each year, but it's best to be prepare early. So we have a Lunch and Learn for that on June 18th. 2021 um you if you would like to be invited to that we will send out all the invites um when closer to that time probably two weeks before the event start so if you would like to be a part of that please understand all you have to do is let us know and we will definitely send you out an email about that last but not least um, now I'm going to introduce um, our new assistant deputy director, Ms. Jean Gall. She will talk to you and just thank you for your time, Ms. Jean. Thank you, Latasha. And uh, I just wanted to a couple things. Um, first off, thanks the presenters, Jeremiah, uh, Nina, and Kimmy for a very informative discussion on some very important issues. Um, I did want to clarify, uh, Latasha, the, um, the new credit or the road to recovery program, that is on May 26th. You had mentioned May 21st in the discussion. I just want to verify that's May 26th, correct? Definitely, May 26th. Okay, and um, most importantly, really appreciate everybody's the attendance um, the participation here, the great questions. Um, I think it was a very informative program. I know I learned a lot, um, especially from the questions that were posed. Um, I just encourage everybody once the information is circulated, if there's any follow up, um, I do. And I was a little bit late joining. I'm not certain if it, this was flagged, but Latasha and Pedro they are part of a team that hosts a virtual open house every Wednesday afternoon. So if there's any follow up questions besides all the other um, resources that will be provided in the um, in the slide decks that are circulated, you can certainly um, reach out to during the especially during the um, virtual open houses or we have call centers and just here to help you um, get through some of these programs and take advantage of them. So thank you again and thank you for a very informative session. All right. So um, once again, um, thank you, Ms. Jean, for that. Um, just to reiterate, our object objective today is to the three E's, educate, empower, and elevate. And then we hope that we have done something today that um, triggered something within you. If you're not ready um, to be in a homeowner, at least the thought is there, um, the seed is planted. So we thank you for your time. Um, you're getting out a little early, so um, I hope you can enjoy your lunch um, and enjoy your weekend. And we thank you once again for being part of today's Lunch and Learn. Thank you.